Hi, in this lecture, we're going to see a very cool sorting algorithm called counting sort. Counting sort can sort numbers in linear time if the numbers that you sort are small. One of the cool things about counting sort is that it's a striking example of the power of direct accessing, the ability to access a desired location in array in unit cost. Let's see more formally what counting sort is about. The assumption in counting sort is that all the numbers that you're going to sort are integers in the range, say, 0 to k. k is an extra parameter, and our running time and space are going to depend on k. The basic idea of counting sort is to determine for each input element a of i the number of elements in the input array that are smaller than a of i. Once I have this number, I can put each element a of i directly into its position in the output. Here is the pseudocode for counting sort. The input to counting sort is an array a from 1 to n, and the output will be, will be put into an output array b. Counting sort uses an auxiliary array C, which we initially initialize to zero. That's the purpose of the first for loop. In the second for loop, we want C of i to contain the number of elements which are equal to i in my input array. That's done with the following for loop that goes from 1 to n, in which we iteratively increase by 1 the location a of i in the array c. Then we want c of i to be the number of elements which are at most i in my input array a. That's done in the third loop, where we keep a running sum and we iteratively set c of i to c of i plus c i minus 1. Once I have these counts, we can do a final for loop where we place each item a of i in the right uh, location. Specifically, to place a number a of i, we look at the location a of i in the array c, and we use that as an index into b. To take into account that some numbers may be repeated, we now have to decrease the location a of i of c by 1. And that's accomplished in the, in the last instruction of the last for loop. Let's now see an example of counting sort. Let's say we want to sort four elements, so n is equal to four. And my input array is equal to 6, 3, 5, 5. OK, so my parameter k then is the maximum. So it has to be equal to 6 in this case. So I'm going to keep an auxiliary array C of length 6, which at the beginning I have to initialize to 0. So C starts with an old 0 array of length 6. Then, in the second for loop, I'm going to set C of i to be the number of elements equal to i. So the first location in the array C should be the number of elements equal to 1. The number is 0, because I don't, have an, uh, I don't have the entry 1 in A. The second location should be the number of elements equal to 2, which again is 0. Then I have a 1 for my 3. I have a, a, a 0 for 4. I have a 2 for 5 and I have a 1 for 6. This is the result of the RSE after the second for loop. 
and just to be clear these are the entries of the array c of the array c the indexes to the entries i create them on top like this one two three four five six okay so for example the value at the location five is two corresponding to my two copies of five in the input array a then in the third for loop, I'm going to keep the running sum to set CI to be the number of elements which are at most i. Okay, so at the beginning I do 0 plus 0, I get 0. Then I do 1 plus 0, I have 1. Then 1 plus 0, I have 1. Then I have 2 plus 1, then I have 3. And finally 4. This will be the result of the array C at the end of the for loop. And now, using this, I can place the elements of A in the output array B. So how do I accomplish that? So I'm going to cycle from the end. So my i will start from the last element of a. I see a 5. So I have to go pick the corresponding location in c. This location is this one here has the value 3, so I can place 5 in the third location in B. So my 5 goes here. And then I have to decrease the corresponding entry in C. So this 3 now will become a 2. Then I go to the previous element in my input array A, that's a 5. So again, I'm going to read the same location in C, which now is a 2. And I can place this 5 here. The previous element should have been a 5 too. OK, so now we move to the previous element in my input array A. That's a 3. So I can go read the third location in the array C. That's this location here. That's a one, so I can put my three in the third location, in the first location. Finally, I go to, and I also decrease this one and make it a zero. Finally, I read six in my input array, so I can go read the sixth location in the input array, that's a 4, so I can place the 6 in the 4th location. And I decrease this 4 and I make it a 3. And that's how counting sort works. Let's analyze the running time of counting sort. Well, if t of n is the number of operations, what do we have? Well, we have the first for loop. Um, it just does something constant time, k times. That gives me the order of k. The second for loop gives me order of n. The, th the third is again order k, and then again order n. And that's the theta of n plus k. OK, so the number of, of operations is theta of n plus k. And in particular, if k is order of n, so if k is small, then the number of operations is theta of n, linear time. And again, the linear time is pretty much as good as it gets, because you have to read at least the input. If k becomes large, then counting sort by itself doesn't go very fast, but we will see later um, a way in which you can use counting sort and sort fast even if k is a bit larger than n. 
let's first however turn to, to analyzing the space okay the space also is easy to analyze for counting sort you need the order of k for the auxiliary array c because recall that the numbers uh, are assumed to be in 0 to k and then you also need uh, n additional entries for the output array b so the total space is order of n plus k which again if k is order of n is theta of n and note how this is um, worse space than for example bubble sort which um, only took constant space 